What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn about PyScript, which is a framework that allows us to use Python inside of HTML. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is the official PyScript website, PyScript.net, and you can see that it says down here, PyScript is very alpha and under heavy development, so it might be buggy, it's quite a new framework, it's probably not perfect, it's still under development. Uh, and we have two ways now to use PyScript. One way is to download it and use it locally, so you download a zip file, you unzip it, and then you have uh, the local references, or you use the install version here where you just have a style sheet reference and a script reference which are referring to online resources. And this is what we're going to do because I don't want to download the package. However, probably if you're doing a professional web application, it makes more sense to have the files locally just for reliability. So we're going to go into PyCharm here and we're actually not going to use a main.py file like most of the time we're going to use an HTML file. So we're going to open up a new file here, HTML file, we're going to call it index.html and we're going to start with the simple imports here. So we're going to link to the style sheet and we're going to use the script here, which is from pyscript.net slash alpha. And now we can use PyScript. And as I said in the introduction, PyScript is essentially like Python in the browser, Python inside of HTML, a little bit like JavaScript, but it's Python. So let's start with a very simple example here. Let's just uh, do a simple hello world. We're going to say pi dash script, which is a tag that is now supported due to this JavaScript file that we import here. And in here, we can do something like print hello world. And this will result in an HTML file that um, that prints hello world. So it's just going to be a text hello world. So whatever we print is not going to be printed to the command line to the console, it's going to be printed onto the website. And by the way, if you don't have it uh, the way I have it right now that the code inside of PyScript is highlighted, you can do it in PyTerm, you can just go into that area into that tag, and press uh, Alt Enter and then say inject language. In my case, it says uninject language or reference. And uh, in your case, if you haven't injected it yet, you can just say inject language, and then you can pick Python, and everything inside of the PyScript tag is going to be Python code. So highlighted like Python code. So we can go ahead now and right click on the file, we can say open in Explorer, and we can double click the index.html. And after loading the runtime, this is PyScript, you can see that we have Hello World here. So this is very simple, you can see inside of PyScript tags, we enter some Python code, and then we get uh, the result. So if we print it, we get the result onto the HTML file. So let's go down here, open up a new PyScript tag and do something a little bit more complicated, even though it's still going to be quite basic, we're going to use the Fibonacci sequence, and we're going to print it. So we're going to say a equals zero b equals one, we're going to use the iterative approach here for placeholder in range, and let's go with 100. We're going to print a and we're going to say a b is going to be equal to b and a plus b. So this is a simple Fibonacci, and it's going to print all these values. So again, let's open this in the Explorer, let's double click it. And let's see the results, you can see we have the Fibonacci sequence here. So you can see you can basically just write Python code. Now, probably you guys are now asking what about libraries? What if I want to use pandas and numpy and matplotlib and stuff like that? This is also not a problem, you just have to declare that you want to use these libraries. So you still have to import them. So I can still, uh, I still have to open up a PyScript tag here. And I have to close it as well. Uh, and inside I have to still say stuff like import numpy as np. But that is not enough because this assumes that we have numpy in the environment already. So of course, numpy needs to be imported, but numpy also needs to be defined as part of the environment. Same goes for matplotlib and so on. So if I say matplotlib dot pyplot splt here, and I want to do something like x and y is going to be np random, random 100 values and np random, random 100 values here as well. And then I want to say plt scatter x and y plt actually we don't need to say plt show I think we just uh, we just have to say plt get current figure, or maybe just plt is enough, but you have to uh, just make a statement where the figure is uh, being addressed. So if you have a figure like fig and axis, um, you just type fig. And otherwise, plt dot get current figure. So gcf, 
or I think PLT should also be fine, but I'm not sure about this. You can play around with that. So this is the code, it should work. The problem is now we don't have NumPy and Matplotlib reference. So let's go ahead again and open the file. This should not work in this case. So down here you can see no module named NumPy, even though it's installed on my computer. Um, so what we need to do here is we need to go uh, into the head and we need to define the pyenv, so the Python environment. And the pyenv tag uh, is very simple. All we need to do is we need to say dash and then space and then numpy and then dash and then space and then matplotlib. And this defines these libraries. These need to be installed uh, via pip. I think, uh, I'm not sure if they have to be installed locally as well or if the JavaScript file loads it automatically. If they have to be installed uh, locally, you just have to say pip install numpy and matplotlib. But I think it's actually, since they are installed in my system and it doesn't recognize them, I'm not sure if they have to be installed. But you need to specify them here as the environment and then we can go ahead and open the website again. Now it knows about NumPy, now it knows about Matplotlib. Uh, you can see it takes some more time to load everything and down here you can see we now have a plot. We now have this scatter plot here. And of course we can do all the styling that we usually do as well. So uh, we can say stuff like plt title my scatter plot, we can say plt.x label, random x vars, random y vars, or maybe vals, because they're not variables, but values. And then we can run this again. And we should see also the title and uh, the labels. So that's the basic idea. Now we can do also some other stuff here. So for example, I'm not going to show this in today's video. Uh, I'm going to show you how to write it, but I'm not going to execute it because the problem is that what I'm going to show you here in a second doesn't work if you run the files like I do at the moment. Uh, but what you can do is you can also refer to a Python script. So you can say PyScript and then you can say SRC. So the source of the, py, uh, of the, of the Python script is um, myscript.py, for example. Uh, and then basically you just close the tag and then you have a file here, Python file, myscript.py. And for example, you do something like print hello world or whatever you want to do in that script doesn't really matter. The problem, and I'm, I'm going to show you here what the problem is. Um, the problem with this is that if I run this now from the code, it's not a problem, but the problem is that we're running this here now as a file. We're not running this as a service. And uh, you can see here, fail to fetch. If I right click and I go to um, to the console, you're going to see that we get the, there you go, this one here. We get MyScript PY from origin null has been blocked by course policy, cross origin requests are only supported for protocol schemes and so on and so forth. So the problem is that we're working with file here instead of HTTP and because of that it blocks the request. If you run this here as a service and localhost with HTTP server and so on, uh, it's going to work, but it doesn't work like that. So we're going to comment this out here, but this is how you do that. You can also refer to external Python files. And one thing that I want to show you here as well is how we can do Jupyter Notebook style cells. So we can do instead of pi script, we can do pi dash uh, repl. And then we can do inside of here, for example, import numpy snp, import a matplotlib dot pyplot splt and then we can copy this and we can do another cell and in here we're not gonna do the imports we're gonna do something else we're gonna say x equals np random random 100 so we're gonna do the same code but we're gonna do it now in cells in Jupyter notebook cells come on what's what's happening here i'm gonna copy this y and then i'm gonna do one more of those and i'm gonna say again plt scatter X, Y, PLT. Now let's see if PLT works. Uh, but now we have three separate code cells. So we're going to see what this looks like. And you already see the cells here automatically. Now the problem is that we have a problem with the indentation here. So um, even though that might not be the best practice, I'm just going to unindent everything here in uh, the editor. So in PyCharm, I'm going I'm to unindent all these uh, lines of code. I'm going to save the file and I'm going to run this web page again. So now you can see we don't have the indentation issue. 
And now we have these Jupyter notebook cells down at the bottom here. And I think if I just go ahead and do this, uh, we're going to see, okay, in this case, we get this exact scatter plot. But if I do something like run this cell, run this cell, and then run this cell, we get a different plot or we get a plot on top of it. So I think the code is also connected to what we did before. But you can see we can run these individual code cells. So I can click on this a couple of times and we get new plots here. Um, and I can also do different values and then we get uh, more colors and so on. So this is how you can also run individual code cells, which can be quite useful if you want to design a website with uh, some code samples that the user can interactively run. Um, and the last thing I want to show you here, this can be quite interesting, uh, is I want to show you how to interact with the website. So let's get rid of all this here. Let's actually get rid of everything here in the body. And let's say we have uh, a simple input type text. And we have a simple ID. Actually, we don't need commas. The, the ID is uh, my input. And this is just going to be a simple text box now. And then we also have a button. And this button has an ID, my button. And it has a text click me like this. So what we can do now with PyScript is we can make these things interact. So we can say, uh, we can listen for events, we can listen for the user doing something. And this can be done with, um, with basically the same way that you do it in JavaScript. So you get the document and you get from the DOM tree, the individual elements. Uh, but you do it with Python this time. So pi dash script. And then what we do is we say from JS import the document and the element. So we're going to use the JavaScript library here. Uh, I'm not sure do we have to import it? I think we don't have to import it. I think it's also uh, already part of, uh, of the pi script environment without having to specify it. And we're also going to use uh, from Pyodite, which is what the whole thing here is based on, uh, we're going to import the create proxy and the create proxy is necessary um, in order to use a Python function as an event handler here. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to define a simple function, we're going to call this function on click. And this function is going to take an event as a parameter here. And what we do then is we say, um, that we want to find the input. So we want to say my input is the document that we have here dot get element by ID. So this is the typical uh, JavaScript way to find elements. Um, and we're going to say that the ID is my input, and then we're going to change the text. So we're going to say my input dot value is going to be set to you clicked the button. And of course, you can do whatever you want. Uh, with this on click function, you don't have to change the value of the input, you can also do something else. Um, but we're going to do it like that. And we're going to say now outside of that function that the button is equal to the document dot get element by ID my button result. And then we're going to say button dot add event listener uh, click and we're not going to pass on click, we're going to say create proxy on click. This is the best practice way or this is the only way actually to do this here. As far as I know, uh, you have to do it like that. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, and that's basically it, I think if I didn't make any mistakes, this should now work. So we should now have once this loads a simple site, where I can put in something here, and I can click and it says you click the button. So this works, you can see, we have now an event, we have a Python function that is connected to a button. And you can of course do with this now whatever you want. This is a very simple example, but you can combine this with matplotlib with numpy with pandas with uh, all these libraries that you want to use. And this is how you use PyScript. This is a very, very basic introduction to PyScript. But PyScript, uh, to summarize it again, is essentially just a framework that uh, is based on Pyodite. It ports Python to WebAssembly, essentially. Uh, and WebAssembly is essentially a format to enable high performance applications in the web or on web pages. Um, and this is a quite interesting project. It's still in the alpha, as I already said, as it says here in the text. But it is quite interesting to know that you can just run Python on HTML in your website without needing to have something running in the back end like Django or Flask. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.